Welcome to History, History of, of the, the atom. atom, a game where scientists battle to find the most information out about the atom. An atom is the most basic unit of matter or a chemical element. Literally everything is composed of atoms. But how did we find out what an atom was or its properties? Let's find out as you pick, pick your, your player. player. Give it up for John Dalton, or as we call him, the billiards player. Dalton's 1807 billiard ball model envisioned atoms as small, uniformly dense, and indivisible solid spheres. He detailed this in his five laws, which are now the basis for modern atomic theory. One, everything is composed of atoms, which are the indivisible building blocks of matter and cannot be destroyed. Two, atoms of an element are identical. Three, the atoms of different elements vary in size and mass. Four, compounds are produced through different whole number combinations of atoms. Five, a chemical reaction results in the rearrangement of atoms in the reactant and product compounds. Do you like dessert? J.J. Thompson sure did. He even named his atomic theory after one. Using a cathode ray tube, J.J. Thompson determines that atoms had negatively charged particles, what we now know as electrons inside of them. He then theorized that since atoms are neutrally charged, there must be an equal number of positively charged particles, what we now know as protons. So he cooked up the plum pudding model, in which the atom is a sphere which has an equal number of positively and negatively charged particles inside of it. Born on August 30th, 1871, Ernest Rutherford is your not-so-typical guy. He was the second son in a family of 12 children, so he's prepared for a good fight. After Thompson's research, Rutherford devoted his time to his gold foil experiment to see if the plum pudding model was accurate. In this experiment, Rutherford used a radioactive element to beam alpha particles on a piece of gold foil that was surrounded by a detector. He found that most particles went through the foil, but some were deflected. So, he concluded that most of the atom must be empty space, except for a dense positive portion in the center known as the nucleus. Niels Bohr and Max Planck are a dynamic duo, known for their large contributions to the development of quantum physics. Born on April 23, 1858, Planck was the sixth child of a professor of law at the University of Kew. During his years as a university student, Planck was convinced that the entropy law or the second law of thermodynamics was also an absolute law of nature. Using the second law in his research, Planck theorized that the colors of hot glowing matter were caused by energy radiating in small quantized packets instead of a continuous wave. As a result, using the packets of energy or quanta, Planck determined that the energy of each quantum was equal to the frequency of radiation multiplied by a universal constant, now known as Planck's constant. Using Planck's findings as a basis for his own research, Bohr suggested a better model to describe the structure of atoms. Born on October 7, 1885, Bohr was the first to apply quantum theory to the question of atomic structure. Scientists before him were unsure of the location of electrons and how they didn't fall into the nucleus. Bohr proposed that electrons were located in specific orbits, or shells, that orbited the nucleus. Because of this, Bohr could explain the process of light emission using electronic structure. According to his model, electrons could absorb energy in the form of photons to reach a higher energy level as long as the photon's energy was the same as the energy difference between the initial and final energy levels. Once an electron reached a higher energy level, also known as the excited state, the electron would be less stable and therefore emit a photon to return to a lower and more stable energy level. Erwin Schrödinger and Werner Heisenberg are not people you want to mess with. Almost exactly 100 years ago, they created a model that was revolutionary to the time and still is today. They cooperate so well, they might as well be one person. Their model, the quantum mechanical model, was all about the atoms being nuclei surrounded by clouds or orbitals. Electrons can be anywhere within these orbitals because, as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle states, you can't know for sure where any electron is at any point in time. Because of this, Schrodinger and Heisenberg's model is based on probability, making it fit for the occasion and helpful for chemistry purposes. Dalton comes in strong for creating a basis in atomic theory. But fear not, Thompson hits back hard by proving that atoms are electrically charged. Even though he put up a good fight, Thompson loses for naming his model after plum pudding.
gross. Here we have a tough battle. Rutherford proved the existence of the nucleus, but buddies Niels Bohr and Max Planck found that the electrons exist in orbits. Out of nowhere, Rutherford eliminates Bohr. The plot thickens. Out of anger and spite, Planck blasts Rutherford, who becomes weak. In the end, Max Planck wins this battle because he discovered Planck's constant, which made an appearance on Stranger Things. Max Planck is a clear winner. Schrodinger and Heisenberg are confusing and hard to pronounce last names. For no good reason at all, Max Planck wins the battle of the atomic scientists. Thank you for playing History, History of the Atom, and we hope to see you again soon.